Now that we've defined the color representation, we're going to combine the H-alpha image with the RGB image. We'll put the H-alpha channel in the red channel of the color image. We're going to do this using a copy of the color image, which we'll call RGBH. And we'll use pixel math. Because we're only going to put the H alpha in the red channel, we'll need to use a different mathematical expression for the red channel than for the green and blue. We therefore need to uncheck this box. The expression we need for the green and blue is simply $t, in other words, the target image. This tells pixel math not to do anything in these two color channels. In the red, however, we're going to mix the red from the broadband image with the H-alpha image and we'll multiply each one by a factor, which we can adjust as needed. With these factors, we're using 50% from each channel. There is now an imbalance in the sky background in the red channel, but this isn't a problem because we can fix this quickly. In the fifth video in the SPCC series, we do this by mixing the H-alpha channel with the R and applying SPCC as if the R channel were broadband only. But here, we're going to do it another way, which will enable us to compare the image easily with the broadband image. We open Linear Fit and add the broadband image as the reference image, and we adjust the pixel intensity of the image with H-alpha. If we now create a preview of the whole image and superimpose the composite image with H-alpha, we'll be able to see the effect. We reset pixel math and simply enter the identifier of the composite image. By clicking Undo and Redo, we can see how the nebulas are enhanced. We can emphasize the nebulas even more by increasing the factor by which we multiply the H-alpha image. Let's open the processing history and go back and multiply the red channel of the RGB by 0 0.03 and the H-alpha channel by 0 0.07. Now we go back to linear fit to adjust the intensity again. Then, we superimpose the image again. Now, the nebula enhancement is much more obvious. Although this technique is very effective, it has two drawbacks. Firstly, if we look closely at the sky background, we can see red noise because the H-alpha image has a lot of noise compared with the R image. And secondly, this composition is starting to affect the color of the spiral arms. If we look closely at the area between the nebulas, we can see that the hues in the spiral arms are becoming cooler. The difference is subtle at the moment, but when we enhance the color at the end, it could become much more obvious. So, what we're going to do is only superimpose the H-alpha on the areas where there is H-alpha. In other words, we'll have the RGB plus H-alpha composition in the emission zones and just the RGB image everywhere else. We'll do this using a mask, and we can build this mask using the H-alpha image. We create a copy of the image, and now we need to stretch it. Generally speaking, all masks need to be stretched, otherwise this is what we get, an almost completely black image that doesn't select anything. We can use the STF to do a quick histogram transformation by copying the settings over to the histogram transformation window and then applying the process to the image.
we disable the STF, and now we have the stretched H-alpha image. Now we're going to adjust the mask so it selects the areas where we have H-alpha emissions. As all the structures are small and bright, multi-scale tools are perfect for selecting them. First, we need to get rid of the noise because this image is very noisy. We can do this by simply disabling the first two layers in multi-scale median transform. This means that the structures one or two pixels in size will be removed from the image. This will get rid of much of the noise without having too much of an impact on the nebula structures. If we want to keep the smaller structures only, we can remove all the structures that are 256 pixels in size or larger. In other words, in this image, we're going to keep the structures that are between 4 and 128 pixels in size. Now we have an image that is black except in the areas with H-alpha emissions. Now we can apply a simple histogram transformation to turn those nebulas that we want to select almost white, and we can clip the background. Remember, this is a mask, not the image itself, so we can be quite aggressive with it. With these settings, we're selecting the nebulas really well. Now, we apply this mask to the image where we're going to superimpose the version with H-alpha. If we show the mask, we can see that we are selecting the H-alpha emission zones, and those are the areas where we're going to superimpose the RGBH image. Let's enable the mask, and open Pixel Math again to superimpose the other image onto this one through the mask. We get the same enhancement of the nebulas, but the color of the arms is not affected. This is the result without the mask and with the mask. As you can see, the spiral arms haven't turned green. Once we've configured this process, we can apply it to the main view. Now we have a luminance image and a color image with enhanced H-alpha. We've corrected the gradients in both images, and they're now ready to be delinearized, which we'll do in the next video.